So what we have here are the documents about MPs expenses that we obtained more than a month ago. And they allow us to compare them with what the House of Commons has published. And the difference is really quite dramatic. Let's start with Hazel Blears, the cabinet minister or former cabinet minister who was accused of flipping her properties. Here are three consecutive claims for the additional cost allowance that she submitted to the Commons authorities in 2004. The first one in March, she claimed £2,881. And the address she claimed it for was in Salford in Manchester. We know that because we, on the documents we have, can see the address. We've blacked out the precise detail of the address. But the document released, it's all blacked out. You would have no idea what address it was for. Fast forward to her next claim a month later, in April 2004. She's claiming £1,450 on her additional cost allowance. And again, you look at the address thing and it says Kennington, London, not Manchester at all. You wouldn't know that though to look at what the House of Commons has released because on the House of Commons version, all that is blacked out. And then fast forward a few more months, still in 2004, and here is Hazel Blears claiming in November 2004, £4,632. But if you look at the address that we have on the documents we have, it's somewhere in London, EC1. It's another address in London. Again, on the version released to the public, that bit is blacked out. So three subsequent claims, and if it were up to the House of Commons, you would have no idea what addresses or address they were claimed for, and you would have no way of knowing that Hazel Blears was flipping from one property to another. Let's have a look at another example. Here's Margaret Moran. She's the MP for Luton South, who claimed 22,000 pounds in 2008, last year, for repairing dry rot at her boyfriend's home in Southampton. Now, here's the amount. It's a one big claim, 22,500 pounds. If you look at the address, you can see the version we have. We know that it's in Southampton. There's the postcode or the first bit of it. We've deleted the actual precise address. But if you look at the document that's released by the House of Commons, you would have no idea that was in Southampton. Funnily enough, Southampton is nowhere near Luton South and it's nowhere near London. And if it wasn't for that piece of information that the House of Commons didn't want us to know, you would have no way of knowing that she was using the allowance to carry out work on her partner's home. And then here's a final example of the kind of information that isn't available still to the public and to the taxpayer. It's the detail of the infamous Duck Island, Sir Peter Vigors, the MP who was found to have claimed for a rather luxurious residence for the ducks at his country home. This is the invoice. It details bird pavilions, Peter Vigors MP, May 2006, or 2008 rather. And here you can see Duck House on Floating Island, 1,645 pounds. The price includes three anchor blocks, Duck House and Island. Now, if it were up to the House of Commons, you wouldn't know that at all because the document itself doesn't appear in the file. So there are three examples of the way in which the House of Commons authorities and MPs have been able to redact or censor the record that they've published to prevent us from knowing what it is they've been claiming. And I think that illustrates that while we have talked about transparency a lot for the last month, we still have a long way to go.